Back in the book segment tonight, Adam Carolla, now the newest factor contributor. You will see him each Monday if we can sober him up from the weekend. Joins us now from Burbank, California. So this is big for you, right, uh, Corolla? This is huge. Uh, this is, it's huge. Listen, Bill, um, second only to the birth of one of my twins. This is the <laughs> no, most exciting day of my life. Not the other And one, I never I, say which twin it is. Yeah, so that would be, it's you know, not emotionally damaging to them, but he knows who he is. Right. I mean, this is like on the par of the man show when you, you got that, you know. Can you remember that far back? No, no, but again, with all the drugs we do out here in L.A., <laughs> yeah, who know. even remembers the weekend? Yeah, I got it. Um, okay, so those wild Republicans in Tampa, it doesn't get more exciting than that, does it? Yeah, it was, <laughs> they, they're old and white, and they don't dance well. And Clint Eastwood, I know your poll says differently, and I didn't, uh, I, you know, he shouldn't have been talking to the chair, um, and he should have been talking to his hair, because his hair has gone crazy. He now has crazy <laughs> old man hair. Talk to the hair should be the bumper sticker. He looks like Phyllis Diller just got out of bed. Someone get that guy some pomade or something. But look, at 82, come on. I mean, he's still got most of his hair, and he's in good shape. And, uh, you know, so I'm not going to criticize his appearance. Now, when he came on, because you're in showbiz, and you know how it's orchestrated. We understand, sure. we understand that he just basically said to the Romney people, hey, I'm going to do what I want, and if you don't like it, I'm going to pull out my magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, <laughs> blow your head clean off. <laughs> so they let him do what he wanted. It's funny, he was just standing backstage and he was looking around and he said all, a guy offered him a chair. It's a good thing a guy didn't offer him a chamber pot or a spittoon because he would have talked to that for 14 minutes. But how unprepared can you be, Clint? Make a few notes on the flight over, would you, next time? <laughs> so you, you thought he, he didn't lend to uh, the governors, didn't advance his cause then? Uh, I'm just saying put a couple beats on a steno pad next time you're going to be in front of five million organized. people. That's all. all right. Now, That's talking right. about, uh, you know, organized and steno pads, we go to Charlotte and we have this parade of militant women on the stage uh, saying that they're under siege is a war against them. And I'm going, what war? What, what war? Do you know what war? Uh, I don't know. Because we want you to pay for your own birth control, that's an attack on your womb, like we're flying a predator drone over your fallopian tubing and calling in a strike. I don't get it. It's like, I like beer, but I will pay for my own beer, and you not paying for my beer is not a war on beer. That's me being in charge of something that I ingest. So that's fine with me. And the other thing I thought was really weird was every single Democrat started their story with, my parents or my grandparents came to this country with nothing. They worked three jobs. They pulled themselves up by their own bootstraps. Isn't that the point we're trying to make? That's the point. Where, where does the part of the story go? They decided to quit all three jobs and wait for the government to bring them uh, IUDs and cheese. Okay, but you don't, you're not understanding the evolution of, of our society in America. It was okay for the parents and grandparents to work the three jobs and not rely on the government, but not us. We're special people, Corolla. <laughs> yes. we, we shouldn't it's called have narcissism to be and entitlement. And uh, by, by the way, there is one good thing about the uh, convention being over. Uh, Via Ragosa is safely back in Los Angeles now, and with his uh, rock steady leadership, we should uh, we're going straight to the moon. I mean, it was some tough sledding there. Somewhere around day three with Via Ragosa out of Los Angeles. I really thought, you know, there was going to be rioting. We we're just going to come off the rails. But uh, thank God yeah, he's got his you guys got to see on a national level what we're dealing with here on a local level, that Nimrod. There you go, that Nimrod. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was Corolla, not O'Reilly. All right, Corolla, thanks, and congratulations again for being a new Factor contributor.